Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for coming here today. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome Mayor Tory, Rick Leary, CEO of TTC, Mr. John Burnside, Chair of the TTC, to police headquarters here. In addition, I'm joined by Deputy Chief Lauren Polk. As you may have heard in my update at the Toronto Police Services Board meeting earlier today, we are here to provide an update to the public on the work that we are doing together to address the public safety concerns which have stemmed from the recent spot of violence and criminal acts in and around our transit system. In recent weeks, we have been actively increasing our high visibility patrols within their transit system. However, it is clear that more can be done to enhance safety and security of transit users. We must also ensure that our city's transit workers who perform a vital service for all of us are able to come to work each and every day knowing that they will have a safe working environment and that the police will work collaboratively with the TTC special constables to ensure this is the case. I also want as chief of police to remind people that we live in a safe city. That doesn't mean that we will not require the police and others to respond to violent and criminal acts. But a million people travel our city every day using subways, streetcars, and buses safely. They get to work, school, social events, and other places because of the dedication of our transit workers who do an incredible job. And we also have to be responsive to the recent events we have seen and to do whatever we can to ensure that people not only are safe, but feel safe as well. DTC CEO Rick Leary and I have spoken about how the Toronto Police Service could enhance our patrols of and presence within the transit system. Of course, we agreed and we have moved quickly together with the Toronto Police Services Board and Mayor's support to establish a sustainable solution to address the safety of everyone who uses our transit system. In addition to our existing patrols, effective today, the Toronto Police Service will be increasing our daily presence within the transit system. We will do this primarily through a significant number of callback shifts which are shifts filled by off-duty officers in an overtime capacity. We are doing this so that on duty, frontline officers remain available to respond to priority calls. Our deployment will allow us to respond to this situation while also ensuring that we do not compromise our efforts to continue the work that needs to be done to improve our current response time to emergency calls. Our plan aims to have upwards of 80 police officers in place throughout the city's transit locations every day. These deployments will focus on reducing victimization, preventing crimes of opportunity, and enhancing public safety. Given this, our deployments will be dynamic and may change from day to day. However, our officers will be on in and around the transit system across the city throughout the day and late into the evening each and every day. Officers from across the city are participating in this enhancement and those who ride the transit will immediately notice an increased presence of Toronto police officers in the subways, on streetcars and buses. I want to pause at this point for a moment to speak directly to the members of the Toronto Police Service, those that we are asking to give more of their free time to help keep our city safe. Each of you are constantly asked to do more, and what makes you so special is that each time we call on you, you rise to the moment. Thank you for what you do. We appreciate your dedication and commitment to public service and public safety. I know that our presence on the subways, streetcars, and buses of this city 
helps to make the operators and users of the transit system feel safer and more comfortable. I've heard this directly from riders and TTC employees during my travels on the transit system while in uniform as recently as Monday afternoon. With that, I'd like to ask Deputy Poe to provide some additional comments. Thank you very much, Chief. As Chief Demke has mentioned, we've been actively increasing our presence in transit properties over the last number of weeks. Security on transit, on transit is a collaborative partnership and Toronto police officers work with TTC special constables, streets to homes outreach workers and the Toronto Community Crisis Service in an effort to make the system as safe as possible. We will be nimble and we will adjust deployments to ensure we are addressing the safety concerns of Torontonians. The plan outlined by the Chief will be in place for the foreseeable future and, and can be scaled up or down as needed to ensure the delivery of core policing services by our front line in addition to implementing the high visibility, high impact plan to enhance public safety for everyone who uses the TTC, as well as the dedicated transit workers. So thank you, and I would now like to hand it over to the TTC. Uh, thank you, Deputy Pogue. I'm TTC Chair John Burnside. For much of the GTHA, transit is a necessity, not a luxury. And to echo the mayor, speech uh, later, everyone deserves to feel safe while using it. The recent string of violence on the TTC is extremely upsetting. As a former police officer, active community member, and a transit user, it cannot continue. Safe, reliable transit is vitally important to the success of our vibrant city. I'm grateful to be working with the mayor and Toronto police to ensure the TTC can focus on what it does best, delivering transit to the people of Toronto. I also want to recognize the hardworking people who keep this city moving. All of us at the TTC and the city are very grateful. The safety of our customers and employees continues to be a top priority. It's considered in every decision we make and every discussion we have. I look forward to the positive impacts these new measures and collaboration will have on the TTC. I'd now like to invite the TTC's CEO, Rick Leary, to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Chair Burnside. I'd also like to thank the Mayor, the Police Chief, and the Deputy Chief uh, for their today's announcement today. We're very thrilled. You know, these recent incidents at the TTC impacting both our employees and our customers are incredibly worrisome to me and the entire TTC organization. Just this morning, we saw another incident at York University Station involving a replica gun, which is simply unacceptable. As many of you have heard me say before, safety of our customers and our employees is paramount to everything we do at the TTC. Everyone should feel safe and be safe while taking the TTC. Now, today's announcement is, an important, is very important and uh, very welcoming, I would say. We don't know exactly what is behind these incidents, but we know that the root causes are complex and they're gonna require a coordinated approach and response. Today is another step to addressing these issues. Along with today's announcement of additional police officers, we're increasing our presence at the TTC with special constables while we're in the process of hiring additional special constables for this year. We're adding more streets to homes workers to help in the hot spots, to actually help underhoused individuals and get the access to, to the help that they need. We're also adding and improving our camera systems within all of our stations and our vehicles. We've increased the presence of station supervisors, our chief and mobile supervisors, as well as managers throughout the system. We've deployed more of our uniform employees throughout the system, and these individuals are there to help our customers. We know the TTC really is a microcosm of what's happening across the city right now. And we recognize that there is a bigger society and systemic issue at play here, and that these issues are complex, and the solutions aren't always easy. The issue requires a longer-term solutions, and the TTC 
will be at the table with these experts in, in crime prevention, mental health and addiction, and homelessness. We need a coordinated and I'd say a passionate approach to this issue because the TTC cannot do it alone. The TTC moves hundreds of millions of people, of customers I should say, annually without incident, but we cannot and we do not take that for granted. I want to take a moment as well to acknowledge the hardworking individuals and the dedicated employees that work for the TTC. Make sure I say thank you to them for what they do every day. They were there for this city as essential workers during the pandemic and they continue to deliver great service in the city. So I just want to remind everybody that uh, the TTC is firmly committed to work with everyone to address the societal issues we have today. So with that, I'll turn this over to the mayor. Rick, thank you and uh, good afternoon and uh, beyond. Uh, John, who has introduced himself, I'd like to acknowledge the presence here today of uh, Councillors Nunciata, Crisanti and uh, Chang, who are members of the Police Services Board and who are here uh, in support of uh, what's being announced today. And I want to thank uh, the Chief and I want to thank uh, Rick Leary and everybody who's been involved in this next step forward. And that's all it is, but it is an important step forward because the bottom line uh, for all of us is clear. The TTC must be safe uh, for everyone. Uh, without exception, the people who use it uh, and the people who provide the service each and every day. And that is uh, what today represents, which is another step forward in trying to make sure that those uh, people, passengers and transit employees, are safe. Uh, we began meetings involving uh, Chief Demku, uh, Rick Leary and myself uh, some time ago, and, and, and union representatives were involved representing those people who work in the system with a view to determining what steps we could take uh, to address safety concerns on the TTC, and today is one more step in that ongoing process. I want to thank the transit union heads who have offered good advice to us and whose members have continued to do a great job notwithstanding some of these events of recent times. I've been on the TTC quite a few days in the past week and use it regularly in any event, and I cannot thank the TTC workers enough uh, for the job they do to keep the transit system moving and to address uh, things that come their way. But we should uh, be very clear in saying, and I think we all have, any act of disrespect or violence that uh, is uh, directed towards another passenger or towards a TTC worker is completely unacceptable. These uh, workers, the transit uh, operators, are the people we rely on to safely move millions of people each day, as has been referenced. They deserve our respect, they deserve our thanks, and most of all, they deserve a safe workplace. I know many people who use the TTC, the passengers are anxi anxious and even scared. And they must know that we are doing everything we can that will be helpful to address uh, their concerns and to make sure everyone remains safe and feel that their security concerns are being addressed knowing that there is more to do. These are challenging times for our transit system and for that matter for transit systems across Canada and across North America. Amalgamated Transit Union Canada President John Denino has called for a national task force to tackle this issue of violence on these transit systems, which I support because they have seen violence which has been taken note of in Halifax, in Saskatoon, in Vancouver and in parts of Alberta. They estimate, the uh, Amalgamated Transit Union Canada, that some 3,000 operators across Canada are being assaulted each year. And that, of course, is completely unacceptable. One would be completely unacceptable. Here, the police and the TTC are taking important action, and I want to thank uh, Chief Demkew in particular, but also um, CEO Rick Leary, because they have worked together uh, with my full support and, and with my encouragement. And deploying more police officers on the system during a time of some anxiety is simply the right thing to do. It will be complemented by measures that I announced earlier this month as part of the city's budget, which I trust will be approved, including an increase of 50 uh, TTC special constables and a significant increase in the number of housing outreach workers on the TTC. Some have been critical of these initiatives and critical of increased investments in the police service, but they were right at the first time when I announced them and they are still a necessary part of the safety answers for today and for tomorrow. I do want to be clear. It isn't and never has been an either or debate. We do have to keep investing in all aspects of community safety, including crisis service, outreach workers, and anti-violence programs. And the measures I've proposed as they relate to TTC safety do include a substantial increase in the number of streets to homes, homeless outreach workers on the TTC. I am committed as mayor to seeing the city actively engaged in all of these areas, but we simply cannot do it alone. And so I will be continuing to urge the other governments to make additional investments in community safety, in mental health, in addiction treatment, just to cite three important examples. 
The work to make sure the TTC is safe for everyone and that our city is safe for everyone will continue nonstop. In fact, the three of us, uh, CEO Rick Leary and uh, Chief Demku and myself, uh, along with representatives of the transit unions and TTC Chair Burnside, will meet again Friday for a regularly scheduled meeting we had to assess the situation, including the increased pr uh, pre police presence that is being announced today, uh, and we will be considering additional steps we can take to address this situation. And I think on that note, I will thank you for being here today, and the Chief will come back up and uh, oversee uh, questions that you have for any of us. Thank you. You have a, a massive turnout of officers willing to take this on. You won't have enough to cover every bus, subway, streetcar in the city. So how do you see this working? Will this be high priority routes? Will this be certain times of day or night? And do you see these officers being enforcement or deterrent for people who might be thinking about uh, thank you very much for the question. You raised a number of important issues there that uh, I appreciate the opportunity to unpack some more. Uh, first of all, as it relates to how we deploy people, we are um, led by the intelligence and the data available to us. In this particular set of circumstances, we're working with our Transit Commission partners to understand where we can be most effective and where we can make the greatest difference. And that includes not just geographically, but time of day, place, etc. Um, so as far as uh, you know, how we deploy, uh, we're going to be nimble and responsive to what the data tells us, our data as well as the Transit Commission data and feedback from our communities. Uh, as far as what the role of the police are, uh, the role of the police is, uh, is multidimensional, certainly prevention. Our presence brings a sense of comfort and safety to ridership. I know that. I've experienced it myself riding the subway in uniform. Um, and the engagement I had with members of the public while riding the train um, was very clear to me, a personal observation, uh, that the presence of a uniformed Toronto police officer on the transit system uh, is welcomed and brings a sense of comfort. Um, so there is a preventative aspect uh, for sure. Uh, there's a deterrent aspect as well, depending on the nature of the deployment. And of course, we're always ready to, to uh, take action and intervene and deal with matters that evolve in front of us. Uh, you mentioned earlier that you thank the officers for giving up their free time, and in fact this isn't free time, this is paid overtime of course. What is this initiative going to cost for the city officers over what period of time? We'll be measuring that. We're, we're not setting an end date to this. What I will tell you, it depends on the uptick, of course, of how many officers we're able to uh, deploy day, day to day. Uh, and we're going to monitor things as they unfold day to day, week to week. Uh, so the calculation of that will be something we will do over time. Why 80 and not 280 or 180? What's special with the number 80 right now? We, we took a look at the circumstances we're dealing with, and our executive leadership team met and also met with our transit partners to discuss the needs, and that was the number that was determined to be the effective number at this point. I will be clear that we are prepared to scale, and we will scale as required given circumstances as they unfold in front of us. Question for uh, Mr. Leary, but also to the Mayor Tory and Councillor uh, Answer. Your, um, your head of special constables has issued several uh, memos to staff saying that arrest is the last resort. Do everything you can not to arrest. In fact, there's language in it that officers took in the morning. I just want to read you the quote. It said, uh, when officers are involved in any of the above situations, they will be expected to show your work by explaining what steps were taken to exhaust all options prior to effecting an arrest. So, if you've got that kind of attitude and officers saying it's not worth their time, how can riders feel safe that your special constables are actually doing the job rather than being discouraged by management? Well, I tell you that they are doing their job. You know, they work very closely with uh, the staff in the stations and they help and assist individuals that uh, need their help in the stations. You know, I talk about compassion. They have uh, direct outreach to CAMH, for instance, and working with streets to home. So they are doing their job about helping individuals uh, that need that assistance. But they're being told not to arrest. Are you going to uh, either yourself or have Ms. Mr. Dixon drop this anti-enforcement attitude and memo and uh, policy that the TTC has, given what you're seeing? Because it's obviously not working. Well, I'd say I believe that's situational and they, it's at their discretion on making arrests. No one's told not to arrest. But you're told to be investigated. Well, well, they, what we do is we do a review of all incidents that occur, and they do that the, with, the, uh, with the team. Mr. Mayor, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Do you want to answer on that? 
I don't think there's a person out there that wouldn't want to see whether it involves police officers or special constables, uh, every possible step taken within the circumstances before you make an arrest. But as to when people arrest or don't arrest, uh, I've certainly always understood as an elected uh, representative that it is not my job to make that decision or to give direction in that regard. It is up to the police service, and in this case the special constables, uh, as to, to help individual officers draw that line. I think in the end, one of the most important decisions, if not the most important responsibility that any officer, special constable or police officer has is how to exercise the discretion. It's a big part of the, of the important responsibilities they have uh, to exercise that discretion. And I trust those officers to exercise that discretion, whether they be police officers or special constables. But I think everybody in Toronto would agree that within the circumstances, and there's sometimes more urgency than others, that it is best if you use every possible means of uh, de-escalating without an arrest that you can, uh, but that if they decide an arrest should be made, that's their decision, and that's why they're invested with the, such extraordinary power and why it's important that they be overseen in that regard, uh, but I just think they should arrest when they think an arrest is appropriate. Question for Mayor Tory. Um, you yourself have admitted more police isn't going to necessarily address the root causes <coughs> of this violence. What concrete steps are you announcing today to uh, address some of those root causes, those long-term solutions that will actually uh, you know, de-escalate some of the violence we're seeing in the city? Well, we're continuing to meet. I said there's a meeting tomorrow, as uh, we have done with the schools. Uh, I've been convened meetings as well with the school boards, the police, and the city. And we have been actively exploring at those meetings, for example, the ways we can use some of the funding programs that are available to make very specific, focused investments uh, in areas where we've seen trouble in the schools. And we're going to continue the discussions with the Transit uh, Commission and with the police and ourselves uh, to uh, take advantage of, of the more than $100 million that the city and its budget this year uh, is investing in these kinds of programs. So uh, if there's anything that uh, is, is brought to my attention in these meetings by our professional public servants, by the TTC, that can help in this uh, cause uh, by making additional investments on the root causes of, of uh, this kind of activity, then I will certainly be all ears on that. But um, it is not up to me to make the decision myself to say, well, this answer or that answer is going to be best for the Transit Commission. I take that advice from the TTC and its staff, from the police. Uh, and their membership, including, of course, their chief. Um, and I am there uh, at, at tomorrow's meeting or any other time with an open mind uh, to make sure that we make the investments that are going to make the maximum difference in enhancing safety on the TTC and, for that matter, in the entire city. Can I ask you a question? And I'm going to speak from uh, the lens of a former investigator myself. What seems to be happening is there are those that are committing these criminal acts, and the intent clearly is to commit a criminal act, whether it's a swarming or an assault on a, on a, a TTC worker or a robbery. But then we're seeing those unprovoked attacks, which oftentimes suggest that there are other crises going on. Are you addressing that with other agencies? And are there other levels of government that, I don't want to say drop the ball, but do we need help from other levels of government to address those other social issues? We absolutely do. Uh, and I said that in my remarks with respect to this very particular, um, you know, stage at which we find ourselves uh, in terms of uh, even some of the funding to allow for uh, some of the increased presence of, uh, you know, people from TTC special constables through to police officers, it would be helpful to have support from the other governments, but in particular, and where we need their help is with respect to increased assistance to us so that we can make some of the other kinds of investments on the social side that I was just speaking of, and investments in mental health, because while I don't want to uh, draw any association as between mental health and these kinds of acts necessarily, there can be no question as a matter of common sense that some of these random acts that happen involving complete strangers certainly seem to involve people that have serious issues in their lives. And I'm sympathetic and compassionate about those issues, but the bottom line is they're not going to get dealt with, um, you know, w without the investment of governments in uh, treating mental health as health, which is not presently happening to anywhere near an adequate extent. So the answer is it's all hands on deck, and it's one of the reasons that I called for a summit uh, on a broader issue of mental health uh, yesterday so that everybody can sit in the same room and address that part of this concern. This is that's not the whole concern, but it's part of it, as is investing in neighbourhoods and kids and families, as is supporting the police uh, and the TTC with additional uh, presence of constables and police officers uh, in, in, the, in the city and on the transit system. Larry, one very quick question. Sir, your uh, transit employees have been uh, critical of you, fair or unfair. Is there anything that you can do to make your workers 
feel more safe because the feeling seems to be the feedback that I'm getting is that they themselves don't feel safe at a lot of them are blaming you. So what, what what do you say to that? You know, I've been going on hearing the exact same thing, and that's why you know when I have had conversations with the chief over the last few days that they immediately reacted to help. We talked last night about you know. Our operators every day now. I'll be meeting on Saturday with a number of, of operators to have further discussions. I want to get their feedback as well. Um, but you know, the police responded immediately for us, knowing that that's what our, our frontline employees are feeling. So, your workers are they? Is it legitimate in their feelings of, of, of safety concerns, or are, is everything being done from your end to protect them as employees? Of the it, it's a legitimate concern on their part. You know, I've talked to them. I've been there with them. Uh, these are concerns that, that uh, resonate in me as well. You know, and that's why I'm making this phone call, and I'm thankful for what the chief is doing in the, the police department today. So maybe just to follow up on this, um, can you put in a perspective or put in context this recent, this recent like, uh, wave of violence on the DC in terms of its significance? How big it is compared to previous years, previous decades? I mean, I'm sure you, you have data on how many you know, incidents or violent incidents have taken place on the police system every year. Can you just give us some context on, on how, how big it is what we're seeing now? No, absolutely. So when we look at statistics back, you know, for five or seven years, all right, we've worked hard to make sure that we educate our frontline employees about de-escalation. Even to a point where I talked to frontline operators about, you know, it's a $3 fare, but twice last year, I ended up in the hospital with em employees that were stabbed. Right? And so I'm really getting the message out about your obligation is really just to engage with uh, the customers, educate them, but do not act for a $3.25 fare. Right? Your life is more important than that. It's about reporting it to, the, to us, having the police and the special constables address those type of issues. We've been fortunate, it's ticked down a little bit, but more recently it, uh, it's gone back up as we were aware, but it's the high profile of these, uh, these incidents, things that we weren't having as regular as we're having right now, uh, which really, you know, you know, we had me reaching out and talking to the, the chief about needing assistance for, right away. So. so the significance of certain or a specific amount of incidents is the issue. It's not the overall or the total number. Of oh, no, you know, every, you know, we, when we were averaging uh, better than one incident a day on an operator, that's just not acceptable. And that's what we're working with. You know, th these high-profile ones have just elevated everything. Um, going back to Mayor Tory, your comments on getting other levels of government involved in funding some of these programs, are you saying the city doesn't have enough money to make these investments? And if so, why did you choose to increase the police budget and not, for instance, put that money towards uh, increasing shelter spaces in the system or some of those mental health support? We actually yeah. have. I mean, the increase in the police budget has received more attention, but uh, and even in this uh, sort of area on other um, aspects that we can help with, we've invested significantly more, as much as they said they could handle uh, this year in the in the community crisis intervention program uh, we have invested more in youth programs it was accompanying an accompanying part of the announcement I made about the uh, police budget um, and we are looking to take advantage of some uh, funds that have been made available to us by the government of Canada to help us with some of the school issues so there are significant additional investments being made and I pointed out that there are you know very substantial sums of money being invested here and we will continue to look for opportunities to invest effectively to invest effectively and and I made it very clear in my remarks today as I have many, many times before. This is not an either-or choice in my mind and it shouldn't be made an either-or choice by other people. We are doing both what I believe to be right with respect to enhancing the resources available to the uh, Toronto Police Service and to the Toronto Transit Commission uh, through special constables and police officers, but at the same time uh, we will continue to look for opportunities to make effective investments in programs that help address some of the root causes and we're working closely with the school board and with the Transit Commission and the police uh, to identify those opportunities. She was saying, though, you've taken some criticism for giving more money to the police in this budget round. Why is the first reach to the police to spend more money on police, to spend more money on policing in view of something like this, as opposed to something else? Why is that the first go-to? Well, look, I'm accountable for the fact that I felt that in light of uh, circumstances that prevailed in the city at this point in time, in terms of uh, both the anxiety but also some of the individual acts that were taking place in neighborhoods and on the transit system, that we should 
uh, make conditional investments in uh, the police service and in special constables and uh, streets to homes workers, for example, on the TTC. But that has not been done to the exclusion of investments that have been made elsewhere. I just mentioned a couple of them. And it's not to the exclusion of investments that we made going forward. I indicated that we will be drawing down substantial amounts of money, I expect, and we have to put in applications to do it, but it's money that's been allocated to the city to uh, focus in some areas where we've had some more problems in the schools. And so uh, we will make additional investments in those areas. We are making, under this budget, additional investments in those areas, tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars that are in the very same budget for for those kinds of programs. They, they help, but there is no one answer. It's not an either-or choice. It's support for the police and for things like special constables on the TTC. It's changing the laws, and we haven't talked much about that today because it isn't directly relevant to this discussion, uh, and it is uh, investing in what I call kids, families, and neighborhoods. I should also say one other thing that is, I think, worthy of, of note. And that is that these kinds of problems in the school system, on the streets, and in the transit system are being experienced by cities across North America. And so that is one of the reasons why I've said that we have to have a broader discussion. And one of the reasons I think that broader discussion is necessary on an urgent basis is so that we can try to figure out as best we can together what is behind that and then make sure we do effective investing in the social side of this. But I think that uh, there are very few Torontonians, in my view, who disagree with the notion that to enhance neighborhood officer programs, improve our response times, have more presence on the TTC, uh, is something that they would see as a priority in our budget. Quick follow the, the chief didn't answer the One question, question but what is this going to cost? Um, is this a bottomless cup when it comes to dollars? How much is it going to cost? I will just say that that matter came up last night when I was talking to both Mr. Leary and, uh, and the police chief, and they were discussing which budget would it, it would come out of, and I said, well, actually, at the end of the day, it all comes out of the same place, which is the City of Toronto taxpayers, hopefully with some help from the other governments, but I just said to them, that's not the issue here. And nor is it the issue with regard to effective uh, investments that we can identify that help to address some of these issues uh, on the social side. The idea is to do the right thing, have the right resources in place to make sure that we can keep people safe and have them feel safe and address their security concerns, whether it's on the streets or, or in the transit system, and that's exactly what we'll do. Okay, so, I think we have to get back to the board meeting. Thank you.